Yes, it is the long overdue recap of The Wolverine. To round out my summation of the X-Men film franchise, just barely in time before X-Men Days of Future Past gets out. Obviously, I think we were all skeptical coming into this thing because, well, we watched X-Men Origins Wolverine. And thankfully, this has zero to do with that thing. Now, it's interesting because despite being the third film to come out after X-Men The Last Stand, it's the first one to pick up with events following that film. Everything else has been a prequel. So right off the bat, it's good to see things moving forward again. And it deals with the fact that what happened in X-Men The Last Stand, especially to Wolverine, was pretty traumatic. He's not in a good place when this thing starts. I mean, you know, this was a guy who went solo for a long time and then he gets a hold of this group and he feels like it's a family and, well, now most of them are dead. So he's just kind of crawled off into a cave and I'd say he, he's waiting to die, except uh, he really kind of can't, which had been a problem in the last one, but they actually address it pretty well this time for a couple of reasons. First of all, they deal with it head on. He gets contacted by a guy whose life he saved during the end of World War II over in Japan. This guy, he's now old and dying, and he says to him, I can remove your healing factor. I can allow you to die. So first of all, we're dealing head on with the fact that for all intents and purposes, Wolverine is kind of immortal, or at least he's darn close to it. Second of all, he actually gets his healing factor knocked out of whack in this film. It's not completely gone. He's still healing faster than a normal person would, but it's not working as effectively as it was, and that is a nice touch. It's surprising it hasn't been done up to this point, to be honest. But the Japanese setting, this is a perfect setting because this is a samurai story, which is really what it needs to be. It, you, they needed to tell a story that was going to be unique to Wolverine. A big part of why X-Men Origins Wolverine didn't work was because they took a story that was supposed to be about Wolverine and tried to make it just another X-Men movie. No! This time they focus on what is unique and specific to this guy. And it works just so much better. I also want to single out the Japanese cast. I'm not going to go through names because I'm going to butcher them, but a lot of these characters are kind of generic on on paper but they cast really charismatic actors for all these various roles including the female in trouble including her father who's a little bit harsher that you've got this mysterious ninja character and they're all just so magnetic on screen that they work even though you don't know a ton about them and you've never seen them before i think hugh jackman also does probably some of his best work as the wolverine in this because he's always been gruff now he's torn and rightfully so. It's a mode that's been earned given what he's been put through in the previous films. I really want to single out though in terms of supporting cast. Oh, she's good. She's awesome. She's just slightly weird, slightly quirky. I hope she sticks around to be honest. I would love to see her and Logan just as a team. She's his sidekick from now on. I think that would be great. There's been no sign of her however in the trailers for Days of Future Past which bums me out a little bit but we'll see. The action scenes are really good in this too. Again, they seem to have learned from X-Men Origins Wolverine. There are a couple of green screeny, you know, lots of special effects fights, but they're few and far in between. For the most part, it just feels real. It feels impactful. It doesn't feel artificial the way that X-Men Origins Wolverine did. So all of that's running better too. Really, almost everything in this is a, a huge step up. There's a couple of stumbling points though. About the one area that this film doesn't quite measure up is the only area that X-Men Origins Wolverine worked in, and that's villain. There's nobody here to replace Liev Schreiber as Sabretooth. I miss the guy. I wish there had been some way to get him into this, but it just, it would have been forced. It probably wouldn't have worked, but they don't come up with a decent substitute. They're, they've got this female mutant viper that she never really worked for me. And then actually, we've kind of got an overload of villains because we've got Viper, we've got the Yakuza, we've got this mysterious group of ninjas. Really, they spend almost as much time fighting each other as they do fighting Wolverine. So we, we've kind of got villain overload. And then there's the twist at the end, which I, I saw coming a mile away. Maybe I'm jaded a little bit though, because there were people in the theater that I could hear going, oh, when that happened at the end. But I don't know, maybe I watched too many of these things, but I thought it was very obvious. But you know what? It doesn't matter because this is not a story where the twist is necessarily important. This is a story about the Wolverine. This is about him. This is about his journey. This is about his character and the essence of what he was and what he is trying to be. And it captures that 
beautifully. I mean, this is easily one of my favorite X-Men stories that they've done. I'm probably gonna put it as a third favorite behind X2 and X-Men First Class, and a pretty close third. It's not a distant way in the back. They did really good work on this. And it makes me cross my fingers that we'll get at least one more solo mission out of Wolverine before Hugh Jackman decides he's too old for the part. So there we go, X-Men franchise up to this point. I will be back, of course, to talk about X-Men Days of Future Past when it happens, but we're not there yet. Until then, this council is adjourned.